The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hello, it's Charles Chapman. Thank you for the Nations Hour on this Friday, the 1st of November. We can look at those monthly candles in a moment, but I do want to show you this. So I make a big deal about I've had webinars and all that for subscribers. They can go to my webinars uh, for free, but uh, you can just sign up for my newsletter and you'll be able to get them on the importance of different indicators and different technical tools. Look at this 200-period moving average. I don't want to go back. It goes back to two days ago where the, the SM the um, uh, E mini S and P E mini was hit that line and then broke it and then slumped and never got back. When did it get back? Got back there this morning from the 9:30 um, uh, economic reports. And, um, yeah, it looks like things were a little bit better. At least the market perceived that and had a very nice rally. So this says to me that this is one indicator that you can use, and it makes the 5775 200-period exponential moving average now very, very good support. Most importantly, uh, we're in a leg B in the 10-minute chart. That just says in the travel wave methodology, if you go from a buy signal to a buy mode, it means that you should go to at least four higher peaks. This is leg B, the second highest peak. It should make a peak, stop. And then go to a leg C higher, make a peak, and then 25 cents higher starts a leg D, and then you've got to be careful um, as it stands right now. So one of the things that I did with uh, subscribers is I had said yesterday morning that before, uh, so I sent out my newsletter, I guess it must have been maybe eight, uh, around about eight-ish. And I said, uh, let's buy the SPXS. That's the three times short the S&P uh, if it can get under a certain point. At a certain point. And um, I, I watched it. I, I actually didn't have anything in myself because I was I had a little technical problem. And when I got everything back again, I checked, and there was just like one fraction. I mean, well, I can't remember if it was like ten or fifteen shares or something that. It looks like it, it might have just touched that the level that I said, and then it was up and away, and then the uh, open, from the open, 930 open, it never got back there at all. I don't take those. I can't do that. I need to know that there was a definite grab of whatever it is that we're getting so that the majority of subscribers have an opportunity. So I, I skipped that. It was a really nice gain. Anyone who hit it, uh, uh, got it. I told them this morning exactly what I would do. I already said if it gets to a certain level, you've got to take something off, money management, which is a nice percentage gain on the day. And even this morning when I said take something off and where to put the stop, that – it's absolutely unofficial, and I'm not following it because technically we didn't get it. But that was the, that was the trade. This morning, I was about to um, go long, three times long, uh, either the, the Dow to add back to our three times long position already or to go to the TNA, which is three times long, the IWM. But if you look at this, and I, I'm just doing this as kind of a preamble to everything I'm going to do uh, before I even forget. I've just written, I was, I've still got stuff I wrote down from Monday that I haven't gotten to. But what I am going to do is write this as I'm talking about this. I hope I don't get distracted. The double tops. Look at the double top in Apple from 237.73 back in July, pulls back very sharply under 200, and then goes right back to where? I mean, how markets do this is just, it's so fascinating. That's what keeps many of us just intrigued. No matter how old we get, we are still learning. I mean, that's just the way the market is. There's always something that says, aha, or watch this. So what does Apple do? It goes from 237.23 down to the 190s, and then it goes all the way back to 237.49. Um, early October, makes a peak in the daily. I had drawn this in to say this is very much like a Chapman Wave stalk leg formation. Uh, oh, today's technical Friday. Maybe I'll have a chance to do it. 
It's got the long leg, then it's got the, it has to be an oval. It's an oval body, not a rectangle, but an oval body, which says you should pop a little bit higher to make the, the neck and then the beak. And there's the beak, it's pink. The beak should come down, but at a certain point, if it goes underneath the arch formation of the oval, um, from that moment on, expect that there could be a bounce, and then you're on your own. Well, it did that, and look what happened. It made the dreaded H pattern made a second dreaded age, and a plunge today's low is 220.27. Right now it's trading at 224.86. Come all the way back. Um, that's a double top. There are so many stocks. I don't want to go through them right now. So what I was talking about was the IWM. So the IWM made a double top, 224.95 back in September. Pulls back, makes a cup formation challenges that, breaks above it, goes to 227.17 and then pulls back. And I drew in that I think there's a cup formation that should go to a W formation. As long as that low that was made on the uh, 23rd, 23rd of October of 217.37 holds, um, that sh there could be a balance. Well, there is a balance today, but I, if I had the TNA, I just want to see TNA... Uh, well, the, from the close yesterday, I'm not sure we would have got it. It opens at 42.71 and it closed yesterday under 42. I think it would have been too much. I can just admit, quite honestly, that if we had it as a position to buy, we probably would not have, we would have missed it because I think it would have gapped up a little bit. But I'm looking at this and I'm suggesting TNA is three times long, IWM, and it would have just been a trade. Now, why am I kind of excited about what we're looking at? One of the reasons why is, we only had one position that I was going to use as a short. All the rest, what I was looking at is keep our long positions. And depending on what happens today, we might be adding to the long positions. And here's what I'm looking at. The market, the market sometimes thinks it has everything right. And it actually looks like it has everything right. But you never, never know. Because when uh, you can trade the rumor and sell the uh, fact we just don't know with the um, exactly what's going to happen Tuesday night going into Wednesday, maybe going to Tuesday, maybe Thursday, Friday, Friday. Who knows how long it's going to be before we actually know? Or it could be a settled deal. It could be so. It could be so clear because when the polls are saying absolutely parallel, um, you know that there's a bias there somewhere. And they hardly ever get it right. There are very few polls that get things right consistently. So I'm just looking at the market. I'm saying, okay, market, you seem to know that you seem to know that the market is going to receive. At this point, you're thinking it's going to receive all the news very well. I'll stay with you as long as you're in that mode. So here we are. The, the one minute chart is now going to a new leg B, the leg C in the five minute, and still a leg B way above the 57.75 200-period exponential moving average in the 10-minute chart. Oh, tell you, would it be nice to have an all-day webinar because we're going to use this nine-period moving average. Look at this. If you were fortunate enough to, enough to be up, well, if you went long at the crossover yesterday, just after the closing bell at about 4.20, when the nine-period moving average went green, let's give it the highest level, let's say 5.00. 57.58 it's still green and it's at 57.90 hasn't turned pink yet hmm. nice indicator I'll be right back Basil Trapp and Gaza whoa 410 S&P's up 55 if you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors.
In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Hi folks, so bonds. Bonds are down 9.30 seconds at 117 and 22.30 seconds. Wow, this is, look at this, straight line down at the peak D. Remember peak D in the Chapman Way methodology, the fourth highest peak is where other things can happen. Well, lo and behold, it made that uh, peak D uh, back in September, what was it? It was September, the week of the 20th at 127 and 22.30 seconds as a continuous contract. So that price can change nothing else, not the pattern, nothing else changes, not the notation, just the number If when it gets smoothed out every month. And it's come straight down to 117. This is really something, right? So there's your lowercase h that goes to lowercase in the 30-year T bonds. I've been asked for quite some time, what do I think of bonds? And all I've said is, I believe... That the bonds, and if you go to the dollar TNX.X, that's how I get the uh, ten-year uh, Treasury note yield. You make you're making it. It could be a double top here, but what we're looking at is the nine-period moving average is still very strongly over the 14 in the daily chart. Uh, it's at 43.07, 4.307%. The MACD is good. The on, look, this relative strength is good. The uh, uh, the stochastic is at 83%. It is pulling back, but it's still over 80% and 83%. This is all very good. And uh, it's a leg B in the weekly chart. And today's Friday. There's just a really good chance that the nine-period moving average actually crosses positive. And usually when the nine period crosses positive, it doesn't just immediately, not when you're looking at weekly charts, it doesn't just immediately turn back down. If you're looking at the one-to-one -one extension we had, it went slightly above that one-to-one -one extension that I had uh, drawn some time ago uh, when it went to the uh, 50 area, why well, it was actually uh, 40. Nine something, I think it was, yeah, 49.97 back in the October, a year ago. Uh, the week, yeah, October, monthly chart, October of 2023. So we've gone not quite one to one to the downside. There's that mid, that line that I've drawn in the horizontal support line. 
Very nice mount. Yeah, it does look like a head and shoulders pattern here. They could start to really tank if at any point the yields go down to the 35% area. That means that the bonds will go even higher. But, uh, yes, uh, the bonds would go higher. But in the meantime, that's what we're looking at. Just stuck in a range. Um, yeah, I could draw the falling axe formation as technical Friday, so we will in the weekly chart. Let's go right there, pull it back down. Oops, I have to go back again right there. All right, and down here. So that says very often you go one to one to the other side to the upside, but all I like to do is to go one step at a time. So this peak here would be the next peak of importance uh, on the week of the 5th of uh, July. It went to 44.93, and we're at 43.30. That's a long way to go to the upside. Meantime, that's the TNX. So a couple of things I want you to do right at this very moment because I think it's so imperative to um, to cover them. Um, TLT, just to, to finish up here, the TLT broke the inverted Chapman Wave Falling Axe Formation. So let me just do this right here. So this is so this is the falling axe where the price goes up 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 up. I just drew it in for the T for the T and X, um, and then if you invert it, I took the chart and all I did is I turned it upside down. This chart is the one that goes look if all the the lettering everything's upside down. So on the on the way up it goes up and then lower highs and much lower lows and then it forms some support and makes a cup or a V-shaped pattern to break the declining trend line. In this case, it runs higher lows and much higher highs. Then all of a sudden it stalls. If it stalls at a peak A or a B, then you've got your dreaded H pattern because it arches over and could very well take out the left side low. But the higher it up it goes, especially if it goes to a C or a D and then turns down and says, there's just a real good chance that you get a, get a pretty good rally if it breaks the lower rising trend line and then sort of stalls and that says, oh, you know what? We don't have to go down to the very bottom. That's if it's gone to a peak D, which in this case, it has. And that just says, in this area, to this low right here, the low of the 5th of July of 89.82, that's going to be key. If that's taken out, then the monthly chart says, uh-oh, you remember this pattern that we always talk about? Out of my three major, mm, where did it go? My three major Trend lines, where did it go? Straight line up, straight line down, cup formation, arch formation, a, a combination of one and two or one and three. There's one and three where it makes a dreaded H comes down. But if it doesn't take out the left side low and then makes another arch formation, that goes from a lowercase h to a lowercase m. It's basically in a rectangle sideways move. Well, lo and behold, this is exactly what we've got yeah, lowercase h going to a lowercase m. So that just says the upside until we can get in the TLT into the one, oh, I'd say 103 area. Up until then, we just stuck in a range. And at this point, you have to say the market has ignored yields. Can it continue? Well, we'll see if it can, but so far it has. All right, that was important. Now the next thing is I wanted to go to gold. Gold is holding very nicely here. It has made a peak G slash B. I'm calling it just for the moment, giving you the, the, the continuation pattern because the nine period moving average. Look how beautiful this technique is. The price pulls back sharply underneath the black 14 period moving average. But that green stubbornly stayed long, that nine period moving average. That says this could be a really good bounce. We see that even, did we see that in the one minute chart? Yes, we saw, oh no, no, it did go pink. Uh, we saw it earlier on. Yeah, so that's when it pulled back, but it didn't. This one it just went pink briefly, and then it turned green again. Uh, peak C, peak D. This is a peak E right now. Leg C continues in the five-minute chart. Leg B continues. Oh, man, I wouldn't be shorting anything right here unless it's a real quick trade. This is still looking quite good. All right, so let's get back to that. So it did pull back. So I'm just continuing the alphabet sequentially. Peak F, peak G, there's never an H. So if it goes to a higher high, that starts a C, and that's really bullish, and that says gold go even higher. But it's a doji candle with the, with the, the Friday close today, leg E in the, in the weekly chart, a leg C in the monthly chart, one penny above the continuous contract high of 
uh, 2801.8, 2801.2, 2801.8. Uh, one, one, uh, 10 cents above that will continue that to a leg C. And uh, we're just watching this closely. So that's important. But look at the GDX. That's not a good look. The nine period moving average just went negative. And I have to call that at this point, most pro probably a G. And this looks to me like I have to call it a sell signal in the GDX, the market vectors, gold miners, ETF. And the nine period moving average has turned down. So this could very well on Monday or any any day next week, if it, if it closes under 39.60, it's at 40.41. That goes to a sell mode and it's a peak D. Remember peak D is where we start to look carefully because it could go higher, but D is where other things can happen. So this is, this is a peak D right here in the weekly chart, leg D in the monthly. That means if all of October, all of November doesn't see a higher high in the GDX above 43 point, whoa, 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 43.80, um, that could become a peak D in the monthly chart. I'll get to silver as we go into the break. Silver dials up 472. Wow, that's the piece of 62. Nice action. Silver's kind of weak here. I'll talk about that when we return. Basil Chapman, Tiger Ignitions Out. I'll be right back and I'll take your questions. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archive live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Building wealth trading in the stock market seems impossible to most people. They think it's too volatile and risky. Most people aren't going to take the time to educate themselves on how to do it right. But you're not most people, are you? At TFNN, you'll get the guidance you need to refine your strategies and techniques to invest like a pro. Because you'll be a pro. All TFNN subscriptions, books, software, and courses are available at TFNN.com. And I'm even going to tell you how to get them for less. Use TFNN's Tiger Dollars and you'll get up to a 20% bonus on your purchase. And once you apply them to your account, Tiger Dollars are automatically used for all future or recurring charges. Tiger Dollars also never expire, are fully transferable, and are a great way to add savings to your newsletters or services. Become the investor you were born to be at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com.
Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. So this is hard to believe. We've been an hour, and look at this extension from the uh, 9.30 uh, low that was made in the uh, in the 10-minute chart, just so like a single leg up. It's actually leg B. The five minute is a, in a new leg C. And the one minute had this uh, instant restart. It's had a whole bunch of things, but it's still walking the nine period exponential moving average. And we're at 5801. This is like a two click session uh, where uh, you, you can start along based on the 10 minute chart and just stay there and uh, hold it just as long as, as long as you can until the nine period moving average actually turns down. Anyway, okay, in the meantime, back at the ranch, what we're looking at here is uh, so silver. I, I questioned myself whether or not I should make it a G slash C. Absolutely, I have no choice. Um, G slash C at the high that was made uh, earlier in October and the, in the 30, it was 34.90, what was that? 34, 35.07. Uh, level and here we are at 32.88. So now what we're looking at is there's a chance and the weekly chart. I'm still calling this a leg C, and probably a peak C, and a leg D in the um, monthly chart. I could give this an, a designation of F slash C Y because you didn't take out your starting point. Your starting point in the, in the weekly chart is way back here. At uh, let's go to uh, the a year ago. A year ago it started off at. 22.46 then it went all the way to uh, that high in the 33s pulls back just under 34 so it's another move so this could in fact just be a continuation pattern of that um, but in the meantime I'm I'm looking at silver still favorably uh, thinking that it's holding very well it's having some kind of a consolidation get rid of that for there, right. Okay, let's look at high-grade copper, probably rallying today. No, oh, it's rallying huge. Copper is up a penny at 4.352. Unbelievable, just going nowhere. But that's, uh, what can you say? Uh, that's what happens with these different instruments. Uh, it's not responding, and that's really, I'm, I'm sure, it's really part of the, um, the building area. Look, the builders have pulled back um, from the 160 in um, Toll Brothers area, high, all-time high, pulls back to the 137-ish area, and now it's trading at 140. It's just taking a well-deserved breather. All right, let's get back to the, what the issue was that I want you to look at here, is I want you to look at, <clears throat> just quickly go to crude oil. Crude oil is stuck in that range under the 200 period moving average, going nowhere. It kept getting repelled in the Chapman wave methodology. I have this instant, re instant right here, so instant, inside track repellent zone and it kept getting repelled from that but it's above the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart of 65.49 it's at 70.14 just going nowhere a couple of things i need to do just real quickly <coughs> excuse me i didn't mean to cough um that wasn't what i wanted to do i wanted to go to the vix index now in all the years i've made a big deal about the only the only symbol that I follow that I've never been able to consider directly related to in the Chapman Wave methodology with peak Ds is the volatility index, except for one thing. Over the last year and a half, it has become so important for some reason, I don't know why, certainly in the shorter term charts, that I have to I have to consider it as a, an integral part now of the Chapman Wave methodology. And lo and behold, look at this. I said to subscribers, I think we're going to rally because that volatility index just ran too high. Well, it went to a peak D and then an E at 65.75. Remember, I couldn't understand that at all. August the 5th, I said, wow, if ever that was a signal that there would be a sharp market reversal, that is it. And that's why we went along a whole bunch of things right there, that moment. And look. It pulled back to 14.86. Then it went peak A, peak B, peak C. 
ran up again, went to a peak deep, pulled back in the weekly chart. Uh, that was the high around about the 8th of August uh, of October, pulls back and starts another move and goes to peak ABCD, another one much smaller than the previous one, but it is a D. So all of a sudden, I have to respect the pattern that I'm looking at was the cup and handle. And lo and behold, it's stalled right there in the handle position after a very large handle. This usually you want a small handle with a big breakdown to the upside. So I'm, I consider and I say to subscribers, I think this is another reason why I think that there could be a nice rally today. Well, lo and behold, this is what's unfolding. We've got the pullback, a long, a long single leg B that went to that 50, uh, what was it, uh, 60. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Just said it, right? It was 60. 65.73 on you. There was a five there. 65.73, 65.70. That was that Japanese. Uh, I'll just put Japan. Okay. Um, that was the overnight. You remember there was that whole thing going on. Okay. So uh, what I am looking at here is that the nine period moving average and the weekly chart for the VIX index is actually walking the nine. It's walking the nine. The nine's over the 14. And that just keeps telling me that fund managers are buying insurance. Nothing wrong with that. If you've had a good gain, there's nothing wrong. You give up some of the gain just to have that insurance. And that's really what I'm looking at. We'll see next week could be really volatile, but we're going to go one day at a time. So with that said, um, Questions. So uh, let me just see. Was it here? Where was it? Where was the first question? Oh, that's right. So, I'll, I'll be here. so the first, uh, I, yesterday you didn't do. Yesterday you didn't do the FXI. You usually do because you today. FXI is the large cap China ETF. And I see that the Doji candle peak D. You remember peak D is where other things can happen in the Chevrolet methodology. In the daily chart back in early October, uh, back at the 37 area, I think that that is quite a serious short-term top. But there's a chance that it could actually last a little longer because it happens to be a peak D in the weekly chart of the FXI as well. So just be careful. And I wouldn't be surprised, I'd said, if stocks like BABA, uh, kind of follow the same power. Oh, lo and behold, a peak D in the weekly chart for Baba up in the 118 area, 17 area, and here it is trading at 97, and it was a peak F. You know, I wanted to do this. Ah, I think I'll do that right now. I just, I need a little fun. It's been a really busy week. Uh, I, I just need some fun. So I'm going to use this to sing the Chapman Wave song called Buy It, Buy the low and sell it the high. I wrote this back and oh, I can't do it because it's the break. I'll use the FX or I'll use Baba. Alibaba as my benchmark right here. I'll be back in a moment. Get ready for the song. Let me have some tea so that my voice, my vocals will be all ready. See you for the song. Buy it the low and sell it the high. Written in 2005. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Open Call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. 
Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters letters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times a daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Dot com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi folks, we're back and we're ready for the song. So the song goes like this. The market goes up, the market goes down, supposed to buy at the low and sell at the high. And you know what we tend to do? We buy at the high and we sell at the low. Chapman Wave is what you need. You buy with the Stoke and the old Mac D. You follow the price and wait for a peak. Higher highs is what you seek. The wave goes to A and then to B. Even the anticipated C and D. That's when it flashes a cautionary light. But all you got to do is make your stops real tight. Suddenly it goes to E and F, a bell rings so loud it can make you deaf. So what you gonna do, which way to go? You sell at the high and you buy at the low. All right, well, that's it. So what we're looking at, yes, Baba, so how, did it, how could you tell that there was a potential pullback coming? Because look, the on-balance volume at exactly the high, exactly to the tick, it made a turnaround. The, the relative strength had a high on that E. So that was a warning. The, and it had two red, two red phases, and that was um, above 80%. And that was a warning, a little double top, an M-shaped pattern. The MACD was still very strong. That's why you aren't always sure. But look at the stochastic. Stochastic went from the 95% area, started coming down. So there were your clues. Anyway, I thought that was fun. And then what did we get? We get the dreaded H. Remember the pattern I was talking about? Uh, one and three, that's the straight line down. And then the arch formation takes out the left side low. And then you get your one to one to the downside. So I'd be real careful. And then the question came in, could I look at, whoa, whoa, whoa. I, I don't know if I've ever followed that before, but I did look at the symbol. And the symbol is ASH what? ASH, ooh, ooh, ooh. was it there or was it there? ASHR. I think that is also... Is that a Chinese stock? ASHR. And lo and behold, um, yeah, it has the same pattern as the FXI and BABA. So I'd just be real careful at 2743. It made a peak at uh, just under 36. It was at 3572. Same pattern. Just be real careful. I don't even know what it is. It is. Uh, I wish they would make the printing a little bigger here. 
Chinese name, can't see it, sorry. But whatever it is, the symbol is A-S-H-R. All right, enough for that. Uh, let's get back. So the question came in about Ford. Look, there's the same pattern. Peak D, it comes tumbling down. Then what does it do? Like the bonds, it makes an H pattern that goes to a lowercase m in the monthly chart, takes out the left side low, has a much bigger arch, fails at a peak C. So this is the third H pattern right there. And what does it do? It comes down sharply. So I'd be careful because Ford, to me, the chart pattern itself, um, having made that peak D, and look, a much larger look there, it's the same pattern. Patterns repeat over and over. They are fractals of human nature, and therefore you've got to have respect for them to say, if that's if that's the pattern that keeps repeating over and over, I better respect it. And that is like a rectangle formation with an arch that goes to a second arch, and you've gapped down. So I just say that in Ford's case, <clears throat> very different in general motors. Um, the ten. A close below 10 in the next two weeks would be very negative. Right now, it is trying to establish some kind of a base above 1020. It needs to close three, two out of three sessions above 1093 in the next three weeks. That's really what I'm saying about four. And look at General Motors. General Motors uh, did pull back a little bit from the peak D. And remember, peak D is where other things can happen. It did pull back from that peak D. Uh, but the technicals are still very strong, and the weekly technicals are particularly strong, and the monthly technicals are still very good. All right, I wanted to get that out of the way. Um, so the next thing, or next question, I wrote them down. I wrote, oh, Amazon. Amazon trading right now at um, up 12.67 at 199.02. It did hit 200.50. It went to a leg E. It looked kind of weakish yesterday because it made that cup formation with a double top uh, 195 area was back in September it retested it three days ago and then it pulled back and today it has the earnings and it goes up to an E right there uh, the technicals are actually still pretty good the stochastics at 67 that's not good but the MACD is good retro strength is okay uh, nine, uh, the on balance volume is good so this is an upward biases and it says that there should be an attempt over the next few weeks to try to get to that all-time, the last all-time high, which was at um, 196.62. Can't be that because we just surpassed that. Why, why is this different? Oh, oh, because we've already taken it out. 200.04. 200.04 the week of the 12th of um, July. So that's definitely going to be taken out. 200.0, it was taken out today. Ho, ho, ho. Are we looking at another kind of a double top? It is a leg C, and this is an official leg C because it took out the last high. So this is a buy mode that says Amazon should go to higher highs. 188.65 was a July 2021 high. Tumbles down to 81 back in, I think it was October of uh, 2022. And zip, it goes all the way back, and it goes to this high that I was talking about at 190. Uh, 200, just over 200, and now it's tackling that for leg D. Uh-oh, leg D. So that would be a leg D. Yeah, so let's just make this clear. 201.21 for Amazon will start your leg D in the monthly chart. Okay, I said that I'm going to use today to, to, to show you some of the monthly charts because October's done. So here we go. As a, uh, let's go to the Dow first. INDU, and we've got... We've got the monthly chart at a leg E. It's called a leg E all the way through the next bar, which means in the whole of November, if the Dow does not go above 43,325.11 or whatever it is, go one penny above that high of the 16th of October, that becomes a peak E. And that's what I said. I've got to be a little careful here to say that those monthly charts having gone to D, uh, D and above, Ah, those are the ones that got to be careful. Well, look at the S&P. Lo and behold, it has a, look at that, instant restart, gone to a leg F. If the S&P all of November doesn't go above 58, 78.46, it makes a peak F. Bell rings so loud, it can make you deaf. But look, the, all the technicals are still really strong. I don't see anything yet for a major top in the monthly chart. It still looks very strong. So does the, um, the uh, weekly at a G. Slash C, it looks more like a C, and that should go to a D. 
So I, I'm still favorably inclined, but the daily chart has gone from a, a sell signal. I'm waiting for the close today. It might be upgraded to a sell mode on a very short term, saying, you know what, daily chart says be a little bit careful here. I the um, Russell no go to the QQQ NDX 100 monthly chart. Now I am able. If it had to fail in all of November to not go above uh, the last, no, the major high of 503.32, I could call this a peak C1, C2. And I'll talk about that when we get back. So the Dow was out of 450, now it's up 397. We'll be back. That's a chapter of Tiger Day Missions Hour. With the tenor. The consistency you're looking for is closer than you think. One or two adjustments are usually all you need to change your equity curve from red to green and keep it there. Come join Larry Pesavento Live to learn what separates the winners from the losers. Join Larry Pesavento on the second and fourth Friday of every month for three hours of live trading from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern Time, where Larry will show you the market setting up and most important of all, the state of mind of a winning trader. By watching Larry trade, you'll learn the Fibonacci levels. You'll learn how to apply A to B to C to D trading patterns. You'll learn trade management, pattern recognition, and much more. Join Larry October 11th and 25th for more live trading action. Your purchase goes towards two sessions, so make sure to sign up now so you don't miss a chance to sit next to Larry as he trades the market live. For all information and to reserve your spot today, go to the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. All right, so let me just finish up. The QQQ daily chart is going to, <coughs> I have to wait for the close, but I think it might go to a sell signal. Sell signal doesn't mean to say, even if it says sell mode, it doesn't seem to, oh my God, every, it means at this particular point, it's like you're going through the uh, different uh, streets and you're getting to uh, Addison Street. So you A, up, then you go to, say, C, Clarendon. Um, that's just telling you where you are. But on the weekly charts, they are all, all the weekly charts are still very strong. Most importantly, the QQQ right now, um, if it goes anywhere from where it is now, the monthly chart says I could call this a peak C1, C2. That was the only one really missing a D. If you go to IWM, that's already gone to a same thing, C1, C2 in the monthly chart, C1, C2 in the weekly chart, 
and it went to a peak E at 227.17. So all of these are saying the, the, the weekly charts are still very strong, but the daily charts, just, just say caution. That's the reason why I would have said today would have been a trade if we did the long side. Anything new. We did nothing. We've got our long positions. We like it. We want a pullback. We wanted the pullback in Microsoft. We wanted the pullback in Robinhood. We want to enter, add to these positions. We've taken nice profits. We got core positions. We're happy. SMHs, sell mode. I've got to watch this closely because that's one of the clues. But at the same time, you've got... Um, you've got these different stocks. Look, Tesla had this spectacular move to the upside, went to their double top, went to that E, and then pulled back, had a round number. I'm watching, look at this peak C at 271, round number back in July, pulls back and goes slightly higher to the 272-ish area in leg D. I'm just watching a lot of stocks right now. I think you're going to have fabulous buying opportunities. But I'm also not afraid to go short. We, if we had got our short position, we'd still be short. Um, but we didn't. So that's okay. I, I'm not in a rush either to go short or long right now, except for trades. We've got our positions. I like them. And they, I'm, I'm thinking maybe I'll have a webinar one of these days like we did back in July because those are the positions we then put on and they worked well. So I'll see you.